So welcome everyone, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, welcome to this uh, instance of the Antria Community Meeting. Uh, today is uh, Monday, May the 24th, if you are um, on the west side of the Atlantic. Otherwise, it will be Tuesday, uh, May the 25th. So for today's meeting, uh, we have uh, a planned uh, topic in the agenda, and that is a discussion of the wireguard support for Andrea and uh, this will be uh, this discussion will be led by Shu. Um, I do apologize if I misspelled your name and uh, I see that uh, you are already online so we can get started. So um, Shu, that's uh, that will be the floor is yours. Please go ahead with your uh, with your presentation. Okay, thank you. So this is your, I will share my screen. Uh, I opened an issue here, 2204, and uh, the case uh, to support wireguard for traffic encryption. Uh, so I will uh, jump through the, jump into the design doc directly, as there are more details here. Uh, so, uh, I will start here and uh, please stop me if uh, you have any comments. And uh, okay, so the motivation is that um, work uh, has been shipped uh, with uh, the latest uh, Linux kernel and uh, it's an alternative to IBSEC. And uh, it claims to be faster, simpler, and more useful. So. Uh, for our recent tests, it performs uh, two times faster than IPsec. Uh, but for the latency, uh, Wagrad is not as good as IPsec. So we can only get 23% uh, for the TCP uh, R test uh, compared with IPsec. So um, here are the test results and uh, um, if you want to check some details, I have uh, some uh, detailed information here. Uh, so there are uh, the, the recent benchmark from Cilium also shows that uh, it performs uh, one to seven times uh, compared to uh, IPsec, um, but uh, the throughput is uh, lower than IPsec. So um, seems to work out could utilize uh, multi-core more efficiently Mm, though the TCR result is not as good as IPsec, so I think it's still valuable to uh, integrate WireGuard with Antria as the maximum uh, throughput is significantly better. Mm. So, uh, okay, so uh, the kernel uh, version uh, above uh, 5.6 uh, there's building support for WireGuard. For earlier kernels, uh, we may need the user to uh, install WireGuard kernel manually. So this should be a document work. And uh, if we want to enable WireGuard, we must define a port number for all nodes. We assume that all, all nodes should use the same port to communicate with each other. So this port might also be configurable by users. And this also should be documented. Uh, WireGuard use, uh, so the, uh, here is how we can uh, configure the WireGuard uh, interface. Uh, WireGuard use Netlink based uh, configuration API. So we don't need any daemon process in user space. And there is an official Golang library to control WireGuard Linux kernel module directly. So uh, I paste the link here. Uh, the most important uh, part for for our guard is uh, it's, uh, it's using the key pair to authenticate uh, uh, peer nodes and uh, also for uh, uh, encrypt traffic. Uh, so we must toss a public key for every node and let other nodes configure it as our guard peers. So a uh, proper way is to set annotation on the Kubernetes node resource 
and maybe it looks like this. And we uh, add uh, this annotation to expose the public key for every node. Uh, and we uh, do not need to uh, save or store the private key by all means. So uh, for agent restarts or node reboots, we just need to check whether the well-guard interface has been assigned a key or not. If not, we need to generate a new private key and uh, set it to the wireguard interface. Otherwise, we just need to check and ensure the public key of the wireguard uh, interface and the uh, annotation of the node are identical. So, so we don't need to store uh, any configurations in a file or something uh, like a file. We just need to uh, generate the wireguard configuration in memory and uh, set it to the interface. And uh, uh, well, if the if the annotation of a node uh, changes, other agents will be informed, so they will change the public key of the peer node accordingly. Mm, so here are more details for the implementation here, and uh, WellGuard only works on layer three, so uh, it cannot handle layer two traffic. And uh, uh, we cannot attach the wireguard uh, port to the uh, VSwitch. And uh, uh, that means the traffic can need to go out from Antria Gateway and be handled by the host network stack. So uh, wireguard uh, 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 can route the traffic based on the peer uh, configurations allowed IP field. So for the first phase, we think we can assume that all nodes in the cluster are wireguard compatible. So we can set up wireguard based on uh, entire no in-cap mode. Uh, that means uh, we just need to change the routing, routing table uh, based on the no in-cap mode to route all traffic through the, uh, for the uh, target sider for, of the peer nodes through the wireguard tunnel. So that's the detailed steps here. And the, uh, the first steps that we, uh, even though we do not need to uh, install the kernel module, and uh, we still can try to load the kernel module uh, in the init container. And maybe we can uh, save the results to the file to uh, for for the future check uh, of the entry agent. Uh, the step two is that entry agent container should check uh, whether the wireguard is enabled in the config map and, uh, uh, and then check the, uh, whether the wireguard kernel module is loaded successfully. So this could be by checking a file generated by step one. So if uh, if wireguard is enabled in the computer Mac, but the wireguard kernel module is not loaded, so we should uh, try and should uh, exit with an error code, in indicating that wireguard is not supported. So uh, that means the node will um, the Android agent cannot run that run on that node, uh, because we have an assumption that uh, uh, all the nodes must be wireguard compatible. Okay, uh, okay step, uh, step three, and we need to uh, add an interface. Uh, maybe the name is dash wg on the host node, and then bring it up. So this step also includes setting up the correct time MTU and uh, generating a new private key uh, if necessary. And uh, then step four, uh, for, for each peer node, so uh, this means that we uh, list uh, all nodes resource uh, in the cluster and we config every node as a wireguard peer uh, using the follow steps. Uh, a is we read the node public key from node notation and uh, set it as a public key field. And uh, then we set the node IP to the allowed IP field. 
and uh, uh, then we uh, also set the parent the, the nodes uh, port cider to the route IP field. And the last step is uh, we set the node IP and uh, the workout uh, listen port to the endpoint field. So that's uh, the four steps need to be done for every node. And then, uh, as I said earlier, so we uh, designed it to based on the entry no income mode. So we just need to uh, change the original routing table, uh, uh, which it originally, uh, originally uh, wrote the uh, port IP seller to uh, the uplink. We need to set it to the wildcard tunnel. So, uh, uh, so uh, after this step, so the, uh, the changes for the node is done, and all traffic will go, uh, all managed traffic will go through the Volga tunnel and be encrypted. So uh, the last step is that we watch and reconcile for a pure node changes, and we may also need to add or delete node, pure node, if necessary. Mm, so do you have any comments for for this step? Uh, if you know, I will continue. Well, we will look at more details in the appendix later. Um, So uh, here are um, more considerations uh, with uh, wildcard on the hybrid mode. So ideally, uh, all nodes should support wildcard. And we can set up wildcard tunnel on all the nodes. And we do not, do not need to create an overlay network uh, uh, based on Geneva or other encapsulation in methods. So, uh, but if there are any peer nodes that do not have wildcard installed, or uh, we, or user, some users may, might want to disable wildcard for uh, some node uh, explicit, uh, explicitly, so uh, the, not, the network might be broken. As uh, uh, the presumption is that uh, we are setting up the network based on no income mode. Uh, so we may leverage entry hybrid mode. And uh, which means that uh, uh, for for those nodes who uh, do not stop do not support wildcard or uh, disabled wildcard, uh, if if they are in the same subnet, uh, the no income mode should just work fine. And if they are not in the same subnet, uh, the packet should be uh, encapsulated by Geneva or other methods as entire in capital does. So maybe this uh, this could be done in phase two or uh, later. And uh, also uh, we may want to support uh, topology aware encryption. So that means uh, for some cases uh, the user might want to encrypt traffic for uh, cross zone nodes only. And uh, for the nodes in the same uh, compute zone, uh, traffic might want not, they may want not to increase the traffic to reduce the cost. So uh, we may leverage the uh, topology uh, annotation of Kubernetes node. And for the nodes, uh, they have the same annotation uh, package can send out to the uplink directly instead of sending to the wildcard tunnel, tunnel to uh, reduce the cost. Uh, this could be an option in the country map. So Xia, uh, in this case, you are saying uh, we still do low income or we'll go hybrid mode? I mean, for the for nodes in the same zone? Mm, I think uh, they are all based on low income mode. So, but it's possible low-income mode doesn't work, right? 
Yeah, maybe uh, this should be combined with uh, the hybrid mode together. Okay, actually, I was thinking, uh, I mean, uh, a purely a hybrid mode uh, probably, probably don't really make much value in my mind. I have to assume uh, people probably will just um, config the encryption for all the nodes. Um, for the probably it makes sense for its topology of while encryption. Mm -hmm. um, another question that if we go no income mode, I think we will lose some features, right? No? Uh, probably mm -hmm. I should say lose, but at least some features will be implemented differently. And actually you will lose some features. For example, the EWAS, EWAS done support no income mode today. I, I'm not sure any other features will be uh, impacted. I assume there will be some impact on features. Sorry, I did not check for that. Maybe uh, I will uh, do some research and uh, find out uh, whether the non income mode will affect entry features. And uh, it's not uh, it's not currently covered by this data. Sure, probably you can do some comparison here. Um, um, another thing that I, I think in time, even with in time mode, you can do wildcard encryption. Uh, but yeah. of course, that will be a little more overhead. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, I, uh, I see you do have that. Okay. Yeah, that's section here. Yeah. Okay, probably allow just, just mm -hmm. that you go through your talk. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I will finish uh, the talk first. Uh, uh, so uh, MQ settings. Uh, we're gonna need uh, 64 IPv4 and uh, 84 IPv6, so we can adjust the MTU uh, based on whether IPv6 is enabled. Uh, so uh, this is MTU, and for IPv6 support, we also need to adjust uh, the endpoint and other IP settings of WireGuard. And also if uh, uh, IP really is enabled, the, the routing table should also be changed. Uh, here is uh, uh, some thoughts on WireGuard on the in-cap mode. So uh, I think ideally we should not in-cap the package before sending it to WireGuard as uh, the wildcard can uh, handle and the routing automatically. And if we uh, encap the a packet using Geneva uh, or other protocol, so it will bring additional overhead. Uh, but it's still possible to create an overlay network based on wildcard. So uh, this, uh, this means we need to change some um, uh, rotten tables. Uh, uh, so because we, uh, after the incompletion, the uh, destination IP will be the uh, node IP. And we want to route the node IP packet to the wildcard tunnel. So we may, may need to create a separate uh, routing table and uh, uh, set a mask in the uh, flow entry. So uh, steps are here. So we may need to uh, change the uh, flow entry in table 70 and uh, add a packet mark here. And then add a special uh, add a row for the packet with this mark to jump into another table. Uh, add table 10 for this case. And in table 10, we set the default route to the wildcard tunnel. So uh, this could uh, also work uh, for uh, a tested Geneva with wildcard uh, together uh, as an overlay network. But I assume this will bring more overhead. So I don't know whether this uh, makes sense or not. I put it. So I put it here. Uh, uh, that's basically 
all, all the design for wildcard on and trail. And here are some uh, code snippets. Uh, she do have okay. data, performance data for the, uh, for income work? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Uh, um, I think it's, it's slightly worse than the low income mode. Uh, not that, yeah, not that much. Okay, got it. Mm. So, uh, so that's basically for uh, all for my uh, design here. And uh, any questions for others? Uh, uh, one small question. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, the full mass? Uh, is that use the full mass for every node? For every node, is it established well got channel to other nodes? And uh, what uh, what UDP, UDP port it will use? Mm, you uh, mean the port port setting? Yeah. Oh uh, yes. Uh, um, uh, I, I haven't uh, came up with an idea to how to choose a port. So I think we may assume that all the nodes uh, have a node open, uh, a port open for the wild guard. And they, uh, all the nodes should use the same port. Okay. Uh, ideally, I think uh, they can use the same port and then hmm. they can establish the wild guard tunnel use the, use this, use the same port. Yeah. I think so. So that will also be helpful for, for users if we, they want to uh, add some firewall rules, use the same part. Yes. Changing when you asked the question about the in cap and the wire guard, do you see any value to enable both to encrypt the traffic in cap by Gineo? Yeah, I think my major point is still about our features. Um, I, I probably cannot have a complete uh, list of all the features encrypted by no income mode uh, in my head yet. Maybe, uh, I mean, I'm sure if you can Put the summary there, probably it's easier for us to be right. Okay, so I will check this offline. Yeah, I think at least trace flow will be impacted a little. Um, I think we still support trace flow within, uh, sorry, a slow income mode. Actually, I'm not sure trace flow still works or not. I mean, uh, since you do work out tunnel again uh, with no income mode traffic, probably you need to check. And for the event it was, it will be some difference from income mode. Um, mm -hmm. He said trace flow, egress will be impacted. I'm not sure anything else can be impacted. I will check this later. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Why, why did you think egress will be affected if using uh, no in cap mode. Because today uh, we don't support egress with no uh, in cap mode. That's uh, why. Well, what if what if we support uh, we make uh, egress work in no in cap mode? Uh, I think in that mode we will also create a tunnel. I say basically you're saying we 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 add some changes for well got tunnel. Yeah. For, for Does that let me see. Because with OpenWiz, you can program the tunnel. <laughs> I think with WorkGuard, I, I don't know. I guess oh. it's not easy. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, maybe Chen, you can have a thing about it for egress any way to do link with WorkGuard. Sure, I have a follow up with it. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, so that's my only concern. So any more questions? If no, I will stop sharing. So uh, this talk is uh, attached in the, at uh, here. So uh, if you have any comments, please just comment on this talk. I also hope to get some inputs from um, product managers to see any requirements on WellGuard or IPsec. Because I see there are some big throughput improvements, but there's the latency uh, jobs, right? And um, another thing that uh, I don't know how enterprise customers will WellGuard uh, that will tree now for enterprise or not. Because for strong strong swan, at least we know it's been there for many years and uh, adopted by many enterprise customers. For where I got, I, I just don't know. Maybe you can get some inputs from uh, management on this one too. Uh, yes, yes, um, Jianjun, uh, actually I have already involved Pooja and Eves to give us comment. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. I will stop sharing here. If there are no more questions. No, no more question. Thanks, uh, Shu. It's a, it's a very nice presentation. It's also a very valid point about change and whether we should also consider uh, in a wider way pro and cons between uh, uh, WireGuard and, uh, and IPsec. I mean, uh, it's good that uh, we have a better throughput, but uh, the results from the latency are let's say not encouraging and uh, we know that there are many latency critical applications you know and uh, where latency is a very important factor the other thing that may be in my opinion a resistance to the adoption of wireguard is the fact that it's supported only on uh, kernel 5.6 and above and uh, as we know in the many in many real environments the linux distributed the, the linux operating system that is used for for host nodes it's a kind of uh, can say uh, consider a black box so users cannot go and install modules update kernels and stuff like that but anyway it's uh, probably definitely a good addition to have uh, you know to the technologies supported by Andrea said this um, for today I don't believe that there was any other maybe there is another topic no, there is no other topic proposed for today uh, in the agenda, which means that now we are uh, we open up for open discussion. So if you have anything that you would like to bring up, discuss, complain about, please go ahead. Well, it appears then that maybe we might uh, have uh, a significantly shorter meeting today and give back uh, almost half an hour of, of uh, your time to the attendees. And uh, I'll just wait uh, 10 seconds to 15, 10 to 15 seconds to see if there is any other topic that you'd like to bring up oh, and then I'll stop the recording. Perfect. It seems that therefore that's all for today. And I would like to thank again Shu for this very informative presentation, which uh, it was really enjoyable. And uh, uh, and when I would like to wish everyone a good evening, a good afternoon, or a good day. Uh, thanks again for joining and uh, talk to you again in the next Antria Committee meeting in two weeks time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye.